And I know it's been a hot minute since I've recorded an episode, but you're tuned in to another episode of Big Game Hunter, your one-stop shop for everything okay preps. So, with softball and fall baseball in full swing, I figured we would take a look at the rankings today, and this is the first rankings, if I remember right. So... We'll do fast pitch first, and then we'll do the fall baseball rankings. So, uh, this is the Class A rankings, which... mm, Top 10 is kind of how I had it, but, well, it was a little different. The top three, I was... I pretty much said that the top three in no order was going to be Cato, Surreal, Ripley, but mm, it is kind of puzzling when you got the defending state champions at number two with more first place votes. But I mean, as you can see right now, they are under, they are five and zero. Oh, but I guess I can see where Ripley has the edge because they have played more games. But anyway, you look at Ripley, they are 12 and 1. Their one loss come against a pretty tough North Rock Creek squad, which, well, like I said, I covered North Rock Creek in the uh, Class 3A state tournament, and that group was legit. And then they had a pretty good outing at the Stewart Kiowa tournament. It looks like they won it over Moss for the nothing, which. We'll get to Moss in a little bit when I get to Class B. And and then, like I said, you look at Cato. They are 5-0 right now, and they got a pretty good stretch of games coming up. They got Washington, Van Oss, Red Oak, Lada at the Murray State Festival. Those should be some good ones to watch. I'd actually like to go cover the Murray State Festival, but... I will be over in Vian that night for some football action, which I will actually get to in another episode. But that's another topic for another day. But Cato, like, defending state champion. Um, and we know they bring Emily Robinson back, but they also got, like, two or three sophomore pitchers that can flat out play. Surreal 6-0, which... Surreal, yes, you could say they lost their lefty in J.C. Schaefer, but they did get Brady Harmon from Strother, and she's finally been able to stay healthy the last couple years. And like I said, when she's healthy and when she's on, she's on. They are 6-0 and right now, which... They got the Roth tournament coming up, and that's usually a pretty good one. I watched the Southwest shootout pretty closely because that is a really tough tournament and it's a lot of good teams. I believe Ripley won it last year. I can't remember if Ripley, I think Ripley is still in it, but I'll have to defer to somebody up that way on that one. Arapaho Butler. I know they've been playing pretty solid. I know, uh, I know my guy Josh Jennings with the Clinton papers, seen them a couple times. He said they are rolling which they're 11 and 2 which they're kind of my sleeper pick right now which two losses to Canute and Shaggock which those aren't bad losses Shaggock's pretty good themselves I don't really know a whole lot on Canute well except they got a new coach which is just their baseball coach but from last year but nonetheless he's still a great coach then Red Oak at five, Shattuck at six. This, these two could go either way, honestly. Red Oak is six and one. I know they're young, but I assure you, Casey Butcher will probably have them rolling. Their one loss was to Fairland so far, which I covered Fairland last year. They still have that one pitcher that can throw it like really fast. I believe she's a Wichita State commit. Can't remember her name now, but I know she's good. Shattuck at six. They're off to a good start. Only 
Well, these aren't bad losses. Chickasha, Weatherford, Edmond, Santa Fe, which I don't know a lot on Santa Fe or Weatherford, but I know Chickasha has been pretty competitive in 4A from uh, – I know somebody that's been covering them lately. I have to go to him on what they're like because I've been wanting to do. I'm still needing to do a breakdown on 2A through 6A, but that's another episode for another day. And then we got Canute at seven, which they did lose quite a bit last year, but they do have some solid pieces. And like I said, after the other coach left, the baseball coach took it over. I believe he's got a daughter in junior high, I believe. And J.W. Gillett will get him going like he did for baseball. He's a great coach. And looking at their schedule, you do – the schedule's 50-50, but for the most part, you got some quality wins. These aren't bad losses. I know uh, – I will admit, like, how I see where they get run-ruled by Vaisai the first time and then beat him the second time. Granted, I don't know a lot on what Vaisai brings back. I know Laverne. Laverne's been kind of a team on the rise. Leedy. I actually don't know what Leedy is like yet. I, uh, I know their pitcher... Like got hurt during basketball. I heard somebody out west talking about that. I haven't really seen much there. And then at eight, you got Navajo, which I don't know a whole lot on them, to be honest. I did hear their best player went to Altus, but I'm not sure how true it was. Ceiling at nine, I'm... Honestly, don't know what ceiling brings back, which they're 9-1. and one. You got the loss to Laverne, but then you got a win over Hammond, which I believe is ranked in the top 10. We'll get to Class B in a minute, which I remember last year, ceiling wasn't bad in softball. And I think, I think they got quite a few from the basketball team playing, so they got some athletes out there. Sterling... I honestly feel like should probably be ranked higher because from what I've talked to from other coaches out there, they are a top five team in most other coaches' eyes. Hmm. Uh, Moreland, I don't know a whole lot on them. I know the catcher is now at Arapaho Butler because her dad's the head coach at Arapaho. Moreland's got a decent schedule so far. Close losses to good teams. Tushka, I know, is still pretty young, but looking at their schedule, you got some adjustment to work with. I don't think this is their full schedule. There's got to be more games than this, which, I mean, looking at the schedule, Kingston's usually a tough out. Caddo... I mean, like I said, I think Cato is most everyone's pick to win it again. Kiowa is getting back there. Tupelo, good pitcher. And then from 13 to 20, I don't really know a whole lot on these teams. I know Hydro, I know, is young, but they still got some athletes. Frontier, Wilson, Rattan. Don't really know a lot on Frontier or Wilson. Uh, Rattan's usually in the mix. And then Ninakong, Wacomas, I have not seen. Woodland. Mm, Woodland's usually around come playoff time, but other than that, I usually don't see much on them. Uh, Wilson. Uh, I actually was asking a guy down in that area about Wilson not too long ago, and he says they got some pretty good players. I know he said basketball and softball teams young, but they've got athletes. So I don't really think there's much I'd change here, which I probably do think Sterling needs to be a little higher. Ceiling, 
I don't know a lot about him, but that win over Hammond was a good win. Yeah, that, it's going to be a wait. I think from 8 to 12, that's going to be wait and see. And then, like I said, from 13 to 20, well, technically 19, because you got Frontier and Hydro tied for that 19 spot. It's going to be interesting to see. Moving on to Class B, this is kind of how I figured the top 10 was going to go. Buffalo Valley and Whitesboro at 1 and 2, which I believe those two play in the Tupelo tournament with Buffalo Valley getting the win. And I'm going to say this. I will not be su surprised if Buffalo Valley wins it all because I got the best one-two punch in Class B. You got Courtney Gray in the circle, and then I can't remember the girl's name that came from Broken Bow. I know uh, my guy from the Broken Bow paper was uh, he commented on one of my Facebook posts talking about that, but I can't remember the girl's name. And then you got the younger right girl that came over from Whitesboro along with a majority of your lineup back. Whitesboro, of course, we know how good Madison Grogan is. The lefty sophomore. Um, hold up. I actually want to take a look at Buffalo Valley's schedule. It's, okay, early on, I guess you could say their strength of schedule is questionable, but the Tupelo tournament, they really made their case for uh, the number one spot. I mean, a loss to Whitesboro early on, then good wins over Roth and Tupelo and Stonewall, not uh, Whitesboro. I've heard Stonewall's young, but I don't know a lot on him. But Roth, Tupelo, and Whitesboro, that was three really good pitchers that they beat, which I can see why they make the argument for number one, which – and then they are also in the Murray State Festival, which – I actually really like to see how they do in the in that game against Colgate and Silo. Those are usually those are two pretty competitive teams in their respective classes. Salsa Central Tournament. I'm gonna <clears throat> probably try to go to that one if I can. I think I have it on my schedule. I got two football games in one week that week. One on Thursday, one on Friday. But I think I can get Saturday in. Dale Festival will be a good one to observe, which I believe that one's hosted at Fire Lake. And then Whitesboro, like, yes, you could say they lost their big sticks and the right girl, but when they hired Peyton Walker, I believe she brought her sister from Hammond with her, so that helped their lineup. And then they are 11-1. and one. They've got good wins on here. And then, hmm. I'll tell you one thing, though. I'm really interested to see how the LaFleur County tournament will go because there's a chance it's possibly a Whitesboro-Pacola rematch. And, well, you guys have seen me talk about Alyssa Parker for Pacola and how she's like the top pitcher in 2A. I was told last year when Whitesboro and Pacola met in the, in the finals of it, that was one of the greatest pitching matchups that was on display because I remember my guy Tom Firm was down there covering it. Uh, I think I had another guy down there covering it, and then I know I had people texting me about it. So if we get that in the Floor County tournament, that, that's going to be interesting to see. Turner at three. Most people were making the argument for them at one, which – their only loss was to Kingston, which I, I know people that's kind of 50-50 on that loss, but I don't really know a lot on Kingston. It's kind of a shame this game, the North Rock Creek Maysville doubleheader got rained out because I would have liked to see how Turner would have matched up with North Rock Creek. Uh, but I know they only lost like a couple, but gained like a really good freshman from my understanding. Stewart and Moss, I feel like could go either way, but 
I'm going to be honest. I would probably lean more towards Moss just because with it's like with Van Herring in the circle, I feel like she gives them like the best chance. With I like I said, I seen Moss last spring and she's good. I would definitely put her in that top tier of pitching, which I know they got a really good win over Colgate, which like I said, I I've covered Colgate the last couple of years in fast pitch and they're pretty solid. Our head coach does pretty good down there. And well yeah, the only loss you got's Ripley, which I do remember seeing that Ripley pitcher play. She, she's good. Because I remember I was talking to another coach about that. and She can throw it. Uh, Lukiba. Honestly, they I do agree they are probably the best team in the West. And I know a lot of coaches that said that, which 8-4 and four now. But, you know, like I said, Lukiba usually plays a consistently tough schedule. So more battle-tested, the better, I guess. And then Kiowa and Hammond. I'm going to be honest, this one could have went either way. I know both teams are pretty young, but I, uh, I'm i going to probably say wait and see on those two. I know Hammond. Hammond is like same situation as Canute, where when the softball coach left, I believe the baseball coach took it over. Um. Hammond's got some good wins, I can see, and a couple of close losses. Of course, two losses was to Minko and Ceiling, which I don't know a lot on Ceiling, but I know Minko is pretty consistent. Arnett, um, I do feel like Arnett should be higher. I know they lost the older Bayless sister, but the younger one can pitch. I haven't really seen the younger one pitch. I've seen the older one pitch. But looking at their schedule, they got a few. They got good wins on here. Mm. Beat Guyman, which Guyman's usually consistently a consistently good five A team. Because I see where even years they don't make it to state, they have given other teams like Piedmont and Carl Albert a run for their money. Uh, Morris close loss to Morrison. Morrison's a pretty good team. Good win over Ampo. And then Tupelo, which five and two so far. The two losses coming from Buffalo Valley and Whitesboro, which I don't know a lot. I know the pitcher is really good, but that's all I know on them. Most I haven't seen them play. Only time I seen Tupelo play was in the Slow Pit State Tournament. In 2021, when they made it in with like an eight and 25 record, I think I'm right on that. 11 through 20. I mean, I guess all bets are off on that. I do feel like Pittsburgh should be higher. I mean, I know they're 500 now, but. You look at their schedule, and that is a pretty tough schedule. I mean, they play Mike Moss, Kiowa, Cameron, I'm told, is good, decent, but I haven't seen them play. Whitesboro, that's not a bad loss. Uh, Leedy, again, I don't know what the pitching is like. Caney would probably be my sleeper. Not great record, but consistently tough schedule. Roth, I may get some heat for this because they're below 500, but I honestly think Roth is ranked too low. Yes, you could make the argument they lost a ton, but when you got a pitcher like Danley Harris in the circle, you can't, you do not want to sleep on Roth and. I guarantee that is going to be a team that nobody wants to see in regionals because when Harris is on, she is on. I mentioned that before the season began, and like I said, they're young, but I believe they'll have it together by playoffs, and if they're not in the top eight by regionals, I just I don't think they're going to be a team anybody wants in their regional. 
Kremlin Hillsdale, good record, but kind of an unknown right now. I mean, on paper, strength of schedule is not very strong, but probably a wait-and-see team with that area because, well, I don't know. Enig area, I don't really know a whole lot on softball and baseball. Basketball and football, I know more in that area, but I don't know. I've seen stranger things happen in these rankings. Mountain View Gogi Bowl, I've heard, is kind of the outlier Basically, from what one coach told me, they've barely had a team the last couple of years. But one coach I talked to says in about a year, Mountain View Gogi Bowl might be the team on the rise, which mm, fairly middle of the pack strength of schedule. So uh, I guess wait and see on that one. Yeah, I... Like I said, it's going to be really interesting to see how it all pans out from there. Um, while we're at it, I do want to take a look at the fall baseball rankings. So, well, I know I don't get to see a lot of baseball in the fall because I'm like busy with fast pitch and football, but I do still keep up with it, so... I think as far as the top 10 goes, I think it's pretty accurate probably for now. Silo at number one, which I'm going to be honest, Silo probably is and should be the favorite because they bring that entire group back. I can't remember what grade uh, Kyler Proctor is in. I can't remember if he's a junior or a senior this year. But Silo, 8-0. Wister... I know Worcester only one loss to Silo, but have beat everyone else pretty good. And I've heard they bring most of their roster back. And I know they do bring um, Landon Thornburg and Landon Donahoe back, which in my opinion is a very underrated one-two punch on the mound. But I remember last spring... I believe one of them was out for most of the season. But I think the whole t most of their core is back and at full strength now. Mm. Rattan and Canute I, and Calera, I figured, would make the top, top out the rest of the top five. I don't know a lot on Canute, but I know they lost quite a bit of their lineup, but I uh, I know a guy from Canoe. I've seen him post uh, on Facebook. So, cl Sorry, I got my words mixed up there. I knew a guy from Canoe. He always posts like clips of his son's highlights on Facebook. Here, and they do still look pretty solid. Mm. And then as far as the rest of the top ten, which I get Oklahoma's 500, but they're not a team I would sleep on right now. Uh, Dale, again, same situation as Oklahoma. They're a team you do not really want to sleep on. Ampo was pretty young last year. I think they got most of their core back. Wright City and Tushka. Uh, I know Tushka graduated a big group, but coaching will have them back for the most part. Red Oak, here's where I'm kind of surprised about Red Oak. I heard early on they were having problems with numbers, and that was kind of surprising because it's like they won the they won the championship last spring. And then I remember like their head coach goes and takes the uh, Ulaga job. And I think they had a couple transfer out. I know Brex Caldwell went to Panama. I think they had one transfer to Oktaha, I think. But I can kind of, but I probably wouldn't sleep on Red Oak. But again, I think their numbers could be an issue. After that, I don't really know much from 12 to 20. 
I think it's pretty much all bets are off from there. Although I have heard Preston is kind of a sleeper team. From my understanding, they're young, and they did get a lefty transfer. I can't remember where he came from. Like he came from somewhere. But, yeah, from 12 to 20, I think it's anyone's bet from there. Although Sterling, I know... All I really know on Sterling, they do still have their ace, but that's all I pretty much know on them. As far as Class B goes, I mean, that's pretty much how I figured my top three. The top three would look Roth, Fort Cobb, and Calumet. Other than that, I don't really know a lot on Class B. I've heard Calumet's a team on the rise. And, like I said, I figure the favorites for B will probably be Roth and Fort Cobb, but I will probably say Calumet will be my dark horse. And then, and then as far if I had to pick two other, it'd probably be Tupelo, because when Arrington's available... He pretty much gives them a, the best chance. And he I can't remember where he's committed to play, but I know he's got a heck of an arm. Buffalo Valley is probably also another sleeper pick. I know uh, their best arm, which I believe is Jace Hunter, when he's on the mound, he, also, he gives them the best chance. He's committed to play somewhere, but I can't really remember where. And then after, after from 10 to 20, I think it's pretty much anyone's bet from there. Yeah, it's... Uh, although Moss could be the team to slide up into the top 10, I just don't know what their pitching is like for now. But, uh, yeah... It's going to be interesting to see how it all goes from there. But um, that's about it for this episode. I should have another episode going up this week. i uh hoping to break down some week zero action and go over the game I'm going to be covering. Um, may look, may, still trying to find a co-host for that one, but uh, yeah, that's about it. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you want to support the podcast, there are multiple ways in the description you can support the podcast. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. See ya.